guess we're on to the fact that there are good guys and not so good guys. When a man controls every move a woman makes, when he will not let his wife leave the house or have any money, and if this man beats her down either physically or even emotionally till she feels that she's nothing, how can she escape that kind of a controlling husband? He tells me when to get up and when to shower, what to wear, what to cook, where I can go during the day. <laughs> I can never satisfy him. You have to ask permission to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Oh, no! My husband burns all my pictures because he doesn't want to be reminded about how fat and ugly I am. I don't I want to make him angry to the point where he's going to... I didn't ask him if I could say a few things on him. <laughs> I'm not under you, I'm not beneath you, I'm not stupid. It makes me feel less than zero. You don't think I'm here, you think I'm here. <laughs> Listen, I'm talking right now. You are brutal. You can get a dog the way you treat her. You think everything's okay. Buddy, it ain't okay. And that's what we're talking about today. Mary Lou is 34. She's been married to her husband, Patrick, for 14 years. They have three children. She called us because she says she cannot take another day with Patrick being so controlling. Now, this is a very unusual, and I think you know that this happened, right? Did Jill, our producer, speak to you, and you told her things? Then she spoke to your husband, Patrick? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was like... Night and day. The, the two of you were not in the same world? <laughs> Is that no. correct? That's okay. Patrick's thing was, I know there are problems in the relationship, but I don't see that this is any big deal, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. Uh, this will be the first time that you really confront him about his control. Yes. Now, I have been told that he's a big, happy-go-lucky guy living one kind of life, and you're really living another. Yes. Tell me what the difference is. Uh, from, from the time I get up till the time I go to bed, um, he tells me when to get up and when to shower, what to wear, what to cook, where I can go during the day. <laughs> and if there's anything different from the list, if I'm going to deviate from the list, I got to call him and ask his permission. I can't call my mother because it's long distance. <laughs> And he thinks that this is all right, right? Okay. Now, you are not allowed to go to church. Why? Because... Um, church, you know, like where dangerous things can happen. <laughs> church! <laughs> Why? Because church represents um, what a man should be, what a real man is. How Jesus wants the man to treat the woman. And it's contrary to what how he thinks a man should treat a woman meaning if you go to church you can get all kinds of wild ideas right right he controls the money you need receipts for every penny he goes through your wallet to make sure you're not hiding i have to now account? there are two things i do not understand you got a birthday check you had to sign it over to him and he has cashed in your children's stock and will not tell you what he's done with your children's money or why. Okay? My mother has to send my children's money to a neighbor because otherwise he slits the envelopes, takes the checks out, and retapes the envelopes. Um, any money that, any check that I get. Do you get, know how much your husband earns? I have no idea how much money you my husband You do not makes. know what happened to your birthday money and you do not know what happened to your kids' money. He tells her she's fat, ugly, and worthless, and that he puts up with her. If she defies him, he punishes her. How does he punish you? He takes my car keys, so I can't, um, you know, we live in, in a town where without a car, there's nowhere to go. So, that's so he'll take my car keys. Now, there's something I did not believe. Uh, we ask our guests to send us a picture. Obviously, when they come in, we'd like to know who they are, right? You could not send us a picture. Why? 
my husband burns all my pictures because he doesn't want to be reminded about how fat and ugly I am. And he threw away our wedding album and our honeymoon album because, because they're reminders to him of what I was like when I was 19. The only picture he carries in his wallet was a picture now remember, of me. This is OK. This is somebody who thinks everything's OK. There is one other thing that is very sad. Your 12-year-old daughter told you something recently. What did your 12-year-old daughter say? She said, um, Mommy, I don't know um, why any man would want you, or, and you're lucky that Daddy married you. He belittles me, and I'm, I, I'm, he, on the phone, He'll write a script for me to read when I'm on the phone. All right, we're going to bring him out. Remember, he has not seen or heard any of this, okay? All right. Now, you know he does not know that this is a problem, right? No, he does not know it's a problem. He'll figure it out, I guess. I know that you have not heard or seen what we've been uh, talking about, so I'll fill you in. How do you think your marriage is going? I mean, we're, uh, truthfully, I, mean, I think the marriage is going along fairly well. I understand that we do have some problems. What are the problems? I think if I had to break it down, I'd say that there's you know, a lot of lack of communication. I mean, we don't... I mean, I t we tend to, instead of talking, I think we tend to argue more than anything else. Turn to him and tell him what's wrong. I don't like the way you belittle me in front of your friends or in front of the children. Um, I don't like how you have control of the money. Um, I don't like the way you tell me what to do and, and when and how. And um, I, I need a little respect and I need a little space. <laughs> A lot. She told us that you tell her when to get up, when to shower, what to eat, what to wear. She can't leave the house without your permission. You control the money. She needs receipts for everything. Uh, we want to talk to you about the fact you say she's fat and ugly and belittle her. Now, that we want. And why, why periodically are our utilities disconnected? And, and I have to beg the utility companies to turn them back on. If you need to be begging, you should be doing the begging. Why do you want to beg? Why do you call her ugly? Go ahead. Tell him what's wrong. Tell him what's wrong. Why, why are you um, so repulsed by me? What, what have I done in the 14 years that we've been together? I mean, I, I'm not going to say I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not repulsed by you. Let's go back. Like, you're mentioning the pictures. Let's, let's start with that. Why is the what? only picture you carry around of me from my 19th birthday? Because that's the only picture we have of you right now. Let's You think everything's okay. Buddy, it ain't okay. I want her to tell you that it ain't okay. Tell him what you want. Tell, turn to him and say, honey, this is what I want. Go. I want you to, I want to be on your level. I don't want to be your servant. I want to be man and wife equally. I'm not under you. I'm not beneath you. I'm not stupid. We'll be right back. to ask permission to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Oh, Makes me feel less than zero. I'm talking. 
talking right now? Now, this is 26-year-old Lahoma. She has been married to Richard for five years. They have two children. Lahoma says Richard controls everything she does. By the way, Richard admits it. Listen to this. <laughs> when the producers ask them to be on the show, Rich, and this is no news to you, right? Richard said, oh, okay, be on television. I want to stand at a podium so he can lecture us. about the need for control. And he wanted to make sure that his wife would be sitting below him. In other words, he's at the door. But I can assure you, when Richard comes out, he's going to sit on a chair like everyone else, and he's not going to be any higher up than, than you are now. What is, what is going on? You cannot go anywhere except you have Two choices, work and the grocery store? That's right. Okay. Now, the thing I found... The thing I found the most fascinating is, have you ever, any of you, left a note for your husband or for your wife? Yeah. 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 Okay. Tell me about the notes that he leaves. Well, before he goes to work in the morning, he leaves notes on the counter or the bathroom about what I'm supposed to do that day. Okay. Now, he pulled the spark plugs out of your car <laughs> while you were at work. Well, why? Because that day we were fighting. Yes. I went to work and I said, you know what, I just won't even come home tonight if you're going to be this way. <laughs> That's good. I'm so he said, you think, he said, you think so? He, he said, if you, you think you're going somewhere else? So he went in the parking lot and took spark plugs out of the car so I couldn't go anywhere. He went to your job. He went to my job. You have to ask permission to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Oh, no! All right. What he likes to do is hold the coffee cup for you to fill. Well, see, he gets in the shower in the morning, and I have to wake up. Um, and he likes to stand in the shower for like an hour with the water running. And I have to make sure his coffee cup is full. He, How uh, do you know when he needs more coffee in the shower? He holds his cup outside of the shower. So you got to watch the shower to see. Yes, like this. Like this. I have he to walk padlocked in her in the house for two days when the sun was here. Uh, they have run out of gas, so he sat in the car with the kids while she... Her job, walked down the highway to find a gas station. When uh, she got back, he said, I wish you got run over. How does he make you feel? How does he make me feel? Like I'm nothing sometimes. Do you feel? Oh, he's, he, he feel, he just said that you, you're nothing without me. He said you could not make it out in this world. I wanted to I wanted to protect Lahoma, so he has not heard what she has said. I, I would like to bring him out now. Sally, I wanted to say one more thing. Um, when I was uh, pregnant with my first child, um, he wasn't too thrilled about it, but you know he got thrilled afterwards. Um, my son had to stay in the hospital for eight days, and, and he yelled at me and screamed at me because I had ruined his day. We had to bring home my, my newborn. All right, we're going to bring him out. Does it say? I know you haven't heard what we've been talking about. What does it say on your T-shirt? Fifty-one forty-nine. That's what she said. 
I thought that was a joke. Go ahead. You have to love yourself. Don't let somebody like him run over you or try to control you. Love yourself. Love yourself. Because you know what? You are making it on your own, dealing with his BS, and taking care of your kids on your own. You can make it on your own. That's just Screw another him. woman's Screw web. Him. You know what, lady? You got so many skeletons in your closet, you don't need to wait for Halloween. Let me tell you something, DC. For one thing, one thing you don't seem to understand. She is not joking and she is not laughing. And you're wearing a t-shirt and kind of making it a joke. Well, now, I gotta make it a little light. Why yeah, but not? no. Why not? Because you have a real problem if one person thinks this is serious and, and, and a terrible list of stuff, uh -huh. really a bad list of stuff, man. What is this about taking spark plugs out of the car, That's okay? Stupidity. What about the coffee cup in the shower? What about padlocking her in the house for two days? What is this craziness that you, look, she's told us these things and this is really a problem. What are you doing with the coffee cup in the shower? What is that bit? What do you mean, coffee cup in the shower? He'll hold it outside the shower why, when why it's do empty. You, well, I don't yeah. want to get out of the shower and go get another cup of coffee. Oh, do you understand? If she doesn't like it, put the coffee pot in the bathroom. Do you hold her coffee cup? You are brutal. And I don't know why you even got married. What do you want a woman for? Tell the truth. Companionship? Because you don't want companionship. You can get a dog the way you treat her. Get that. Lahoma, how does she know? Richard, one minute. What do you want to say? If I try to do something for myself, you heard him. He said, um, she's not going to run me. I will not follow behind a woman. Oh, if okay. I try to do something, I want you to, to do, I want you to do something for me. I want you to turn to him and tell him how you feel. You we'll be quiet. You turn and tell him. He doesn't think there's a problem. There's a big problem. Like last night, we were walking down the hallway. I got out of the elevator first. And I was ahead of you. You would not allow that for me to even walk in front of you to even get to the door. He pushed, you, you pushed me behind you to walk behind you. And you won't, you think that I should follow you. And what you, even just by your controlling ways of you tell me how to talk and what to say and how to think. It doesn't. And how does it, that make you feel? It makes me feel it makes me feel like um, I'm just, I don't know. Tell him. How does it That's make you feel? A wife should be. No. How does it make you feel? Well, it makes me feel less than zero. It makes me feel bad. Oh, it up. No way should be walking solid. I don't want you to walk with no, this listen, or... listen, I'm talking right now. and smile, but if we were at home, you wouldn't smile. You'd say, well, wait a minute, I don't care. We'll be right back. I don't uh, want to make him angry to the point where he's going to... I didn't ask him if I could say a few things. You don't think I'm here. You think I'm here. <laughs>
stories like this and you say cannot be, but, it, but they're not the same. Everyone has their own unique way of trying to control. I want you to meet Linda, and I think she knows that very well. Linda is 32 years old. She is the mother of four children, two, six, 14, and 16, mm -hmm. right? My blessings to you for being the mother of teenagers. <laughs> She has been married for seven years to her husband, Robert. Now, you know that he says, she says things that you sometimes hear. He says, the marriage is great. I've got control of my wife. I've got control of everything. She says, he calls her names. He totally controls the money. She has to ask permission to take her car. And he tells her how much weight to gain or how much to lose. He slammed her against the wall and hurt her neck and then refused to pay for MRI and gets her drunk so he doesn't have to wear condoms during sex. Now, let's go over those, okay? Uh, you told us that your fear, there is physical abuse, but you told us that you are afraid to discuss this because you had not asked his permission. Oh, well. What's going on? Do you need to ask somebody's permission? I don't uh, want to make him angry to Please. the point where he's going to... I didn't ask him if I could say a few things out here. Oh, God. Okay. He can't hear us. If you ask us not to say anything about it, we won't. Okay? But he cannot hear us. Let's talk about the money situation first, because I know that really worries you. you you say he gives you ten dollars a week and you have for the four kids well, he gives me a, a certain amount of money which is not very much maybe 20 to like give him lunch money okay for the, school mostly for the kids mm -hmm. can you write a check only if i ask him um oh. i can't write a check if i ask him let's let's talk about the sex thing um i think it's an issue he brags about having sex with other women in front of us. Um, no, he, um, he, when we're arguing, he would like to come really close to me to make me, he'll say stuff like, um, I can, I don't think I can say that on TV though. That I'm going to do her right in front of you, a friend of mine. I did, and that's why I got hit. <laughs> what about the condoms? The condoms is because I want, I want him to wear a condom. I know we have four kids already, but I don't want any more, and I'm allergic to some of the birth control things that are out, so I cannot use them, so I depend on him. But he'll get me drunk, and, you know, we'll, we'll be having a good time and everything, and he'll get me drunk. Oh, my God, can he hear me? No, oh. I cannot hear you. He'll get me drunk. Are you too. that worried about him? You know, there's nothing I could say to you that Carl I didn't ask him couldn't... if I could say all that. that. <laughs> really? There's nothing. There's nothing that I could say that anybody would be upset. Are you that worried about it? You are a very beautiful young lady. Yes. <laughs> I don't feel that way. You don't feel beautiful. My goodness, you are absolutely a gorgeous young lady. When you say you don't feel like that, hon, what do you feel like? I can never satisfy him because he's always wanting me to gain weight or lose weight. And if I don't, he, he says that he's going to go get somebody else. And... You have to, you ha don't, you, you, you have to. You can't, the minute he comes out, you can't backtrack. He hasn't heard or seen. I'm promising you that. But we're here, and, and sometimes people have to be confronted with the truth so that they understand what it is that's wrong. Do you understand that? Yes. Let's bring Robert up. I told, uh, I told the audience, in case you wonder what they're doing, that you're saying the marriage is fine, I think it's going great, this, I have control of my wife, and I decide how much money to give her and what to buy and what she does and where she goes and for how long. And it works very well. Oh. Oh. 
Yeah. It works great. It works great. Does it work very well? It works great. Tell me why it works well. I know where she's at, I know what she's spending, and I know how much I got. All right. And she does not feel that she gets respect. Honestly, she does not. I think she gets the respect she needs. Yeah. Okay. Is it up is it up to you to decide? Is it up for me to decide? Yeah. Or is it up to her to decide? No, it's up to me. Okay. You told us, and I quote, my wife tries to act all strong and everything. I put her in her place. I tell her if she leaves the house, her key might not fit the door when she comes home. Absolutely. Absolutely. Robert, that's a dictatorship. That isn't a marriage. I don't like to be treated this way. I need respect from you. She gets respect. She, gets her, she, takes, she takes care of the things at the house, and I take care of things at my job. When I go to work, I'm gone. 14, 15 hours a day, I work. I have four, four kids. I supply them. They don't go hungry. They got clothes. They got everything that they need. But I work too. Yeah, I make the baby. Robert, I you work. have called her fat, but lazy, work. stupid bitch and things we can't say on the air. Yes, oh, yes. Okay. yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Do you think a good marriage is built on fear? Look at her. She looks She's afraid. afraid of me? Yes. Look at her. She looks afraid of you. Yes. Baby, I love you, but I just don't want to be treated like that no more. You really so, think so, so that I don't... I want respect, Rob. I, you don't think I'm here. You think I'm here. No, I don't. No, I don't. We're on the same level together as husband and wife. She's afraid of you. She's not happy. She doesn't like the lack of respect. And, and, somebody should not be allowed to get away with any kind of physical abuse. What? You ever hit your wife before? Tell the truth. Yes. Yes. What did you hit her for? You say you love me. Don't cry when you say that. Don't cry. Because you never pay attention to me, Rob. I always pay attention to you. When I'm trying to, when I, you tell me that I'm weak, and like right now, when we leave, I know you're going to tell me that I was whining. Every time I try to talk to you about it, so say it strongly. Just respect me. No, no. No. Look at me, Robert. I'm not happy. Go, Robert. I'm not happy like this, baby. You have got to. I just want you. Lori, are you all right now? Sandy. Sandy, sorry, you all right now? <laughs> right? Okay, because I know you were crying a bit. Tell me what's going on. Um, from the beginning of our relationship, um, at the start, uh, everything, it seemed real cute that he would be really protective of me. We met, he he didn't want me to work. He wanted me to stay home. He didn't like me to be around guys, and it seemed sweet. It's like I went into this with blinders on. It seemed really nice that he wanted me all to himself, you know. After we got married, things really changed. Um, he started to get forceful with sex. Um, Physically abusive? Yeah. Um. How bad? He would um. He would put his hand over my mouth if I tried to scream, and I couldn't breathe. I thought I was gonna go unconscious. That's called rape. I don't. I can't go to the grocery store by myself. Talk about insecure. 
He pushed her into a wall when she was pregnant. She almost lost the baby. And he listens in on the phone calls to her mom so they can't talk. Um, I think he controls the money, is that correct? Yes. And they argue and he takes her money and her keys so she can't leave and uh, he's been known to stand in front of the house so she can't leave. Sandy, you told us your sex life is also a problem? Yeah, he wants to have sex three and four times a day, you know? I have little kids, I mean, I stay home with the kids, you know, because he doesn't want me to work. And I stay home with the kids all day, and he's coming home, and he's always wanting sex constantly from me. And I can't do it, I'm tired, you know? And he says, well, if you don't give me sex, then, you know, you don't, you better give it to me, you don't want me to go nowhere else, you know? <laughs> Let's bring, let's bring Ken out. what Sandy has been saying. But you do know you're here to talk about the fact that you are very controlling in your marriage. Uh, first of all, why do you, are you, are you paying attention? I'm paying attention. Why, why do you control her? Why do I control my wife? I, to be honest, to be honest, I can totally because I believe I, I believe I got a problem. Oh, thank you. Got one person to admit it. I do. I, I do have I do have I do have a, a, a serious I mean I wouldn't say serious but I do have a little problem with controlling. I, I, I might I might need I might need a little counseling. I agree for some counseling or something. And then again, I just don't want too much counseling. I don't want every. I don't want. I don't want the counseling to counsel all my business. But then that's part of counseling. Yeah. But I do need some some counseling though. She she has told us that you pushed her into a wall when she was pregnant. Is that correct? We 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 got in, we got into a fight. Yes, I did. Yes. Okay. Uh, you yes. have held your hand over her mouth so she can't breathe. These are physical things that it is wrong to do. You know that. It's true. Okay. I want you to turn to your husband and tell him what else is wrong. From you, not from me. I want to um, look at him and tell him. Look at him and say what you say. Say it like you mean. Because that's what y'all gonna do in time. Say it like you mean. Don't cry. I want you to give me more respect. More. I don't want you to, to hurt me in front of the kids. I don't want them to see you hurt me. <laughs> I don't want you to threaten that you'll cheat on me if I don't give you sex. We'll be right back. How does he control you? Um, in a lot of different ways. He is extremely jealous and doesn't trust me. Um, he had to get caller ID on our phone so he would know who was calling, even during the days when we were gone. 
He did hit me. It Tell was me Memorial about. Weekend, and um, we had gotten in an argument. He has a pattern, and it's always like there's always a honeymoon phase, and then there's like a tension building phase, and then there's always this explosion. And I called 911, and he ripped the phone out of the wall. And he hurried up and ran outside when the police came and told his story first, and they kept me in the house. And next thing I know, they're in the house handcuffing me and taking me to jail. I actually have things in my car packed, and I am ready to go. Well, we taped that show about six months ago, and of course we're always concerned what happens to the women after uh, we do these shows about control. Huh, you hear me, Robert? And we were surprised to get this message on our answering machine a few days ago. This message is from the, the voice of the woman you saw on that tape clip. Okay, listen to this. I just wanted to tell you that I finally left my controlling husband, have a great job, and it probably took me a couple of times to watch the show um, a couple of times over you know, to finally see the whole picture. But I tell you, it is the best thing that could have ever happened in my life. And I just wanted to say thank you. I talked to some of these other women and tell them that there, there is a better life out there, that I didn't have a job, but now I work for an attorney and, and life is good. We called Denise back and she told us she took the children and the way she did it was she rented her own place and she left him, Steve, which is right before Christmas. Difficult time to do this, guys. She said the first week was the roughest she's probably ever had. Now she's doing great, and of course, I, on your behalf, we wish her all the best, okay? Okay, as I said, right now I have worries about all the women. I think I have worries uh, particularly about Linda. Please welcome back Myra Kirschenbaum, who is a relationship expert, and she's written a book called... Maybe this applies to you. The name of her book is Too Good to Leave, Too Bad to Stay. Think about that. Uh, what do you think about what you've heard here today? Well, I have a lot of things that I want to say. First, I tore out from the phone book. Every city in America has this. It's a list of community service numbers uh, for domestic violence. Make no mistake about it. This is domestic violence. That's right. That's right. Children services, parent support, all the free services, mental health support, please just tear it out from your phone book. Don't continue to suffer. You deserve to have a life that satisfies you. All of you women, you have everything that any woman has. You have the intelligence, you have the cap capability. You, you're not missing anything. Don't you deserve the respect and the all everything that the ordinary woman gets this is terrible and it's got to stop right now we'll be right back. Lahoma, well, what are you thinking now? What am I thinking now? I think this is, it's ridiculous how, how he is. I, I totally agree. I don't think that anybody should ever. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't believe in breaking up the family. I don't want my children not to be. Oklahoma, the research is very clear. Bad marriages are bad for the children. Your marriage is terrible. And
and your children will suffer. They're seeing you so scared. How can they possibly respect you if they see that you're not an equal? They either will become like you or they'll marry someone like your husband. You're setting something up that's going to go on for generations and generations. Mary Lou, okay? Mary Lou, I am begging you, please. You're an intelligent woman. You're a kind woman. You're a thoughtful woman. With all my heart, I'm asking you, please save your life. Take your life seriously. You don't deserve to be treated like this. You have everything a human being needs. You will not be Richard told our producer he realized how much his behavior was hurting Lahoma, and he promised he'd try to change. But Lahoma told us as soon as they got home, Richard was back to his old tricks. Watch for them on a future update show to see if he's still controlling her. Linda told us when they got home, Robert was right back to his old self. She says, I realize now that Robert is not going to change, so I'm working on my own life, trying to get a job and building my self-esteem so that I can make a new life for myself and my children. After the show, Sandy told us, Ken openly admits he has a problem and my leaving him won't solve that problem. So they've both been going to counseling regularly and they're hopeful that their marriage can be saved. Immediately after the show, Mary Lou became hysterical and told us that Patrick had threatened her during one of the commercial breaks. Our producers were afraid to let her leave with her husband, but she insisted on flying home with him. We did arrange for her to go to counseling, and Patrick agreed to move out for a few days so they could think things through. While Mary Lou was drying her tears, Patrick found another way to hurt her. For the whole story, watch for our update show.